Hello, I'm Sister Lisa Peter. I'm Lisa Peter, and I'm coming to you today from Hazelwood, USA, our podcast and our webcam, uh, October the 20th, 2019. We're on our 52 facts about the Book of Acts series, and today is fact number 42, the Road to Damascus Experience. A Road to Damascus Experience. I am of the opinion that everyone has their own personal road to Damascus experience sometime in their life, meaning God deals with people in different ways. It was that one sermon that you heard, or song, or a dream, or a brush with death, or a loss of someone special, an accident, or the audible, or the still small voice of God that got your attention, something that you read in the Bible, or a testimony from a friend, just as the Bible says that God has given every man a measure of faith, I also believe that God also has everyone, that he, he makes a way for everyone to hear the gospel one time or another in their life. He formed and fashioned you in the womb, and he also made a point to put something or someone in your life to draw you to him. It could it could or maybe it's not a dramatic dramatic experience like Paul experienced. You know, Saul, he was knocked down by a bright light when he was on his way to Damascus. He had authority to go get Christians and bring them in out of their homes or wherever they were and have them put in jail or killed. And um, he had, a, he had the, the legal documents, but Jesus had another plan for Paul. Did you know that not only did he knock him down, by a bright light, and he was blind for three days. And he had Ananias, another man, had a vision and told him about Paul, Saul. And uh, Jesus changed his name to Paul. And I wonder, perhaps he changed his name because of Saul, not to get confused with Saul, King Saul in the Old Testament. Um, I don't know, because he's changing names all the time. Like Simon was changed to Peter. And, um, well, in the Old Testament, names were being changed all the time. Abraham. His name was Abram, and Sarai got changed to Sarah, and so forth. But anyway, he changed their names uh, for a purpose. And Saul, who became Paul, ended up writing over 13 of the books in the Bible, in the New Testament. And plus, he was mentioned over half of Acts is talking about him. Because in Acts chapter um, 7, you, you see him mentioned when Stephen's being stoned, the first martyr. And then in um, Acts chapter 10, talks about... Um, Acts 9 and 10 talk about his um, experience on the road to Damascus. And then, I believe it's in Acts 22 and then Acts 26, he talks, he tells the people about what happened. So he's very, um, this road to Damascus experience was very vital, a very important time. And you may not see a bright light or you might not be knocked down, um, but you can be pretty certain that God had an Ananias in your life somewhere could have been your grandma, your grandma who prayed for you all those years, uh, your grandma that was um, consistent in telling you, you know, how much uh, the Bible meant, and teaching you all those old songs, those hymns that tell the story about Jesus. And I believe that it is. Um, someone, somebody prayed for you, that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm t reading from my notes, I know that's kind of tacky, but anyway. Uh, you may have went to Sunday school, BBS, a church camp, crusades, tent revivals. There might have been somebody come door to door witnessing to you. Um, somebody might have taught you a Bible study, etc. I believe it is a fact about the book of Acts that Jesus did come to seek and to save that which was lost. And we're all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We are all in need of a Savior. Peter told them in Acts chapter 2 that this same Jesus whom you have crucified is both Lord and Christ. We may not even know that we crucified our Savior. Say, well, we weren't there, but no, not literally. But we still, we all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Saul, Paul did not realize that the people that he was persecuting were in fact the very ones who had that message for salvation. Stephen, the first martyr, was one of those Christians who saw Paul was persecuting. Stephen also saw a bright light. He saw the heavens opened and he saw Jesus. Don't you know that no, there's no person that is above the law? 
There's no person that can get saved any other way than a gospel message. God will find you and draw you to Him. If you're seeking for Him, you will find Him. If you're breathing, He is reaching. C-S-E-E, -E, Spirit-filled, emphasis on people, expand the kingdom. You know, we heard this song at General Conference called Faces. It says, I dreamed my life was done and I stood before God's throne. It was time to see what my reward would be. And with love, he reviewed my life to count what was done with for Christ, for that is what will last eternally. See, I've done my best to share that Jesus really cared. Oh, and he would save if they would just believe. But seldom did harvest come, and so few that I saw one, until the Lord said, Turn around and see. Then he showed me the faces of the ones who'd come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought nobody saw me labor in lowly places. That's when Jesus smiled and showed me all the faces. He said, though you did not see the yield, you were faithful to plow the field. And other times you helped me just plant the seed. No matter how small the task, you did just as I asked. And thanks to you, these souls have been set free. Then he showed me the faces of the ones who'd come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. And all those years I thought nobody saw me labor in lowly places. That's when Jesus smiled and showed me all the faces. And for all those years you thought nobody saw you labor in lowly places. One day he'll smile and show you all the faces. Oh, the faces, you'll see their faces. You know, that's, that is what we've been talking about too during our study of power of obedience and that liberated through submission. That's the book I got right here. This book right here, liberated through submission. I've been talking about it through uh, the last few weeks. Um, and I know if you was just tuned in and just to learn about Saul, you can go ahead and click off. But if you want to hear the rest of my devotion, I'll, I'll keep on going. Um, chapter 6 is where we're at on this. Um, submission and a married mo woman, a woman of faith, knowing that God is going to direct her husband and to trust that all things work together for their good, to get her strength from being submitted and also being powerful because she was released from all that stress and frustration of trying to be in control. You know, that's so true. If you just let go and let God, you'll find out that life is so much better when God is in control. That's what liberated through submission is all about. At the foundation of submission lies the very power of God. And through prayer and patience, God will sooner or later resolve any issue that we face. And just like that song I just quoted the words, they just stick in my head. I hear the melody because I heard the, I actually heard the song. And here I just said the words to you. But you can find it on YouTube. It's uh, Tom Trimble. It was um, this Friday night service at General Conference during the um, memorial service basis. Um, but anyway, just thinking about that, we might not see results right now. And the people I'm talking to on the internet, I know that today there's probably not going to be a lot of people watching me. These are the first day, not, but in about two or three weeks you can go back and you'll see that several people have tuned in and watched. And um, But one of these days, when we stand before God, hopefully we'll see a harvest. We'll see so many faces that we have that were won, not just because of me personally, because some sow and some water and God gives the increase. It's a combined, just like what we was talking about, service after service. Sermon after sermon, song after song, year after year. It's a constant working in the field. And through patience and time and prayer, we will see the harvest. So that one song that we like to sing, even when we don't see it, God's working. Even when, you know, that's Waymaker song. If we can't see something now, we think the problem has gone unnoticed. But now faith. And my grandson, he quoted that today um, during our homeschool session um, that come over on Sunday mornings. And he did. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I praise God for that. Um, I'm going to cut this a little bit short um, because 
I just wanted to get on that. Um, if you want to see a really, really good book, a really, really good book, uh, The Thirteen Apostles. This is in our Edwin and Elder Library. But by J. Ellsworth Callas, K-A-L-A-S. I'm not sure how to say his last name. But anyway, he talks about how um, we were studying about um, Simon this um, every month we're studying a different apostle or disciple and um, we're studying about Simon Zelotes Z-E-A-L-O-T-S or whatever anyway how he was so zealous and this this book really goes into the detail you don't see hardly anything about him in the Bible his name is just mentioned a couple times called uh, the Canaanite somewhere else which this book says that Canaanite doesn't mean he's from Canaan it meant it was just another way of saying Zelotes or Zealots I don't know how to pronounce these words. But anyway, we're studying about him, and it's so exciting. So this is another book I recommend. Um, this is the book I recommend the most, King James Version of the Holy Bible. cannot read this uh, too much, because the more you read it, the more you learn. Great is the mystery of godliness. There's, it's so awesome. It's so exciting. And you learn about Saul, what we learned about today. Saul, whose name was Paul our great apostle who wrote over 13 books, epistles, um, Gen um, <laughs> yeah, Genesis, Romans, um, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. I think Timothy wrote Timothy. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. I'll study more. I'll study more about it. Well, thank you. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to shut this one off first. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you want to learn more about us, it's Mark and Lisa Peter at Hazelwood, USA. And if you want to f uh, find a church in your area, at upci.org. Well, God bless you. Bye-bye.